Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Belgium once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. Now we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel once before. These guys are actually a very recognisable brewery and beer brand in fact, but I just haven't gotten round to reviewing many of their beers yet and that's something that we do really need to fix on the channel. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is one that they've released for something of a special occasion. It is supposed to be quite a nice one. It's a style that I very much enjoy but one that we don't get to review all that often on the channel in fact. So yeah I'm quite curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah for this review then we are going to go to a little place called Hufavis in Wallonia, Wallonie in Belgium, quite close to the Luxembourg border and we're going to have a look at another beer from Brasserie de Chouf. So this one is the Chouf 40, the 40th birthday edition. It comes in at 5.6% ABV and this one is a Belgian blonde. So yeah, of course this one was brewed to celebrate their 40th anniversary and uh, it was released through System Bolaga up here in Sweden, I think in October of 2022. So this one has been sitting in my fridge for a little while. I have been meaning to get around to this, but we have finally got some time to have a wee look at this one. I really need to review some more Belgian beers for you on the channel, of course. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we get on. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brasserie de Chouf before, and we will see about adding more to that list in the near future. I do need to review more of their beers, as I've said, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system just use the search bar put your hometown state whatever into the bar and if i have reviewed beers from your local area they should pop up failing that you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and you'll find this one in the belgian playlist along with many other things but like i say we do need to add more Belgian reviews to the channel over the next wee while. But yeah, let's go on then and chat a little bit about Brasserie de Chouf. And I do apologise for any bad pronunciations in this video. French and Dutch are not the languages that are most familiar to me, but we'll do our best. So, anyway, as I've mentioned to you already, Brasserie de Chouf are based in Hufelis in Wallonia, Wallonie in Belgium. And these guys are actually very close to the Luxembourg border. But the two men behind this brewery are the brothers-in-law, Chris Bavarertz and Pierre Gobron. But they started the brewery together in an old cow shed in the middle of the Ardennes forest back in 1982, which makes them one of the first of the new wave of microbreweries in Belgium. But Pierre had attended a basic brewing course as part of his food technology studies, and originally the two had brewed together in their mother-in-law's garage, borrowing many of her pots and pans before she complained to her friend and local farmer Albert Masson, who really took an interest in the project, and he offered them the use of his cow shed for a very small portion of every bottle that they sold. They used uh, 200,000 Belgian francs, which in today's money is about 5,000 euros, to get together some new equipment. And the first batch of beer they brewed was only about 50 litres, and this appeared in August of 1982. But Pierre focused on the brewing while Chris dealt with the business side of the company, and they continued to grow the brewery over the coming years and moved to a new brewing hall in 1991, which took the production up to 3,400 litres in the first year. Uh, 3,400 hectolitres, I should say sorry, in the first year. So that's a production capacity of about 30, uh, 340,000 litres per year at this point. But the brothers opted to name the brewery Brasserie de Chouf after the village of de Chouf where the original brewery was based and the gnomes on the bottle came about due to coincidence. Apparently there'd been a fire in a neighbouring village and they were hosting an auction to support the victims of the of the fire but a painting of a gnome came up on the screen and this really just stuck with them but the gnomes carry uh, sacks of hops and barley and uh, the Aya glass of Le Chouf beer on the label, so you will notice all of this. But that is where the where the little uh, the little dwarfs come from. But this meant that the brewery became effectively known as the Gnome Brewery, and much of their initial popularity actually came from the Netherlands and further afield, rather than from in their own backyard. But in recent times. Uh, in more recent years, they have become more popular in their local area as well. But in 2006, the brewery was bought by uh, Duvel Murthat, 
and uh, by 2014 it they'd scaled up the brewing production to 300,000 hectolitres of beer per year. So that's about 30 million, if I remember the conversion correctly. But the current brewmaster is Eric Lejeune, and so far these guys have produced around 17 different kinds of beer. But they offer brewery tours, they've got a large bar at the brewery that you can go and check out, so I think that is something we will need to do in the future. But that is all I can really tell you about Brasserie de Chouf for the moment. As I say, part of the Duville Murthat group at the moment, but uh, yeah, a very well-known beer brand actually, for the mainly because of the gnomes on the bottles. But uh, yeah, as I say, that's everything I can really tell you at the moment. They have very recently celebrated their 40th anniversary, hence why they have produced this uh, Belgian blonde beer. So um, yeah, let's. Uh, if you want to learn more about the brewery, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's get on and have a little look at the beer itself. So as you can see, this one is one of the typical 330 milliliter Belgian stubby bottles. You can see that on the neck there. But yeah, plain gold bottle cap on this one. It does look very, very nice. Uh, and yeah, there you can see the dwarves. I think these are all the different, uh, the gnomes, sorry. All the little gnomes uh, just kind of holding on together. So I think this is all the gnomes from the different labels, from the different beers that you get. The last beer that we tried from these guys, of course, was the Mixhoof, which is the Scotch Ale. But I think I do need to try some of the other beers as well, because we really should have covered this brewery a bit more on the channel over the years. But uh, yeah, this beer, I believe, cost me 30 Swedish kroner, which is about three euros. Uh, somewhere in the region of £2.50 sterling, $3.50 American for those of you watching in different places. But like I say, 5.6% Belgian Blonde Ale, this one. Apparently this is brewed with a little bit of sage as well. So we'll get this guy out into the glass and see what we have. I really love a good Belgian Blonde. Leffe was always a little bit of a go-to for me back in the day. So yeah, we don't get to review this style of beer all that often, which is a shame. Because I think as an alternative to, you know, like a nice Hellas Lager or something, having something a wee bit stronger like a Belgian Blonde can be quite nice. But there we are. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> Has been sitting for a little bit, hence the, the, more, the stronger carbonation. <coughs> yeah, there we go. So, clear my throat a little bit. Still, I haven't fully shaken the effects of that cough that I had. But anyway, so... Um, as you can see, this beer has poured very, very nicely, actually. Uh, you can see there's a solid two and a bit finger of a frothy, I would say, cream-coloured head on this one. You can see there's a mix of small and medium bubbles there. I think I didn't really pour it overly aggressively. I think it's just that it's been sitting for a wee while. I'm not sure exactly when this beer was bottled, of course, but I think this one has been uh, brewed across the year since it's their 40th uh, anniversary year. But yeah, you can see, and as you would expect... For a Belgian blonde, this one's poured a lovely kind of very rich golden straw colour. You can see it has a little bit of a natural haze to it. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. A few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look very, very nice. Um, yeah, remember the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do, or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of your beer as well. When it comes to Belgian beers, remember, they quite often add a little bit of brewing sugar into them, which is why they retain their very light mouthfeel, but they can be higher in alcohol. Um, so yeah, the adding these different sugars and fruits and things in Belgium will play a, a role in, uh, in determining the colour of your beer. So yeah, other than that, I really don't think we have to say much more about the appearance of this one in terms of what you would expect from a Belgian blonde. This is pretty much it. So let's have a wee look at the aroma of this beer and see what we have. Oh yeah, that smells very nice. It has, it's been a good while since I've had a, a Belgian blonde actually, come to think of it. I've missed this style, I have to say that. Mm. Yeah, this is this does smell very, very nice, I have to say that. Yeah, straight away with this one, it gives you everything you want. You've just got that little bit of green component, you've got a little bit of dried fruit, and you've also got the nice big bready and yeasty components coming out of the beer. So uh yeah, I like I do like how this 
um, how everything in this goes together. It, as I say, it doesn't do anything unexpected, but it just it gives you everything you want from the style. And for me, when it comes to classic beers like this, you know, the German, Czech, Lagers, uh, the Belgian, uh, Blondes, Bruins... Uh, doubles, quadruples, all these kind of things. What you want is for them to be true to the style and well brewed. This one, I think, no doubt will be knowing this brewery. Um, but yeah, this one does smell very, very nice, I have to say. So let's just break it down and describe it for you that wee bit more in depth. So, um, on the... Um, on the... The, um, the backbone of this beer then, brain's not working backbone of this beer you can absolutely smell a nice little bit of a fresh white bread bread crust in there there's a little touch of a woody element to it as well so yeah a little bit of fresh white bread bread crust a little bit of woody element but you've also got um how do you say a little bit of a kind of jacob's cream cracker type note to it there's a little bit of that kind of woodiness and crackeriness going on but then you've got the lovely kind of fresh bread crust as well um on top of that Yeah, on top of that, you start to get a little bit of, um, you get a little bit of a kind of fresh white bready character, for sure. So you can smell that fresh, fluffy white bread, uh, which I do enjoy. You've got a nice kind of wheaty sort of thing out of it as well. There's a little bit of an almost wheaty character in the back of the nose, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, within the bready notes, you've got a little bit of that typical Belgian doughy yeast, you know, a little touch of a kind of clovey. Uh, there's a little touch of that kind of clovey spice to it and of course you can pick up the sage that they've added into this one as well which is kind of interesting so yeah you've got this nice fluffy fresh white bread but then within that yeah a little bit of clove a little bit of sage and a little bit of cracker and stuff so uh yeah the way that this beer goes together from that perspective is very very nice um yeah on top of that there's a little bit of mcvitie's digestive biscuit there's also um yeah there's a little bit of, yeah, you do get a little bit of straight up biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate. You could maybe argue that there's a little bit of honey in there. But yeah, for me, it's mostly a McVitie's digestive biscuit that comes out of this one, which I uh, really enjoy. Um, yeah. I think this one, this does go together really nicely, actually. The, yeah, the... As I say, just the nice white bread, it's a fresh fluffy white bread, the bit of bread crust, the bit of woodiness and crackeriness that's in there, also the little bit of honey and the little bit of biscuit too. So I really like how this beer goes together from that perspective. Um, so yeah, it gets a big thumbs up from me actually, I like how this one um, goes together from the malty and yeasty side of things. Um, there is a little bit of a more kind of farmhousey bready note to this beer, which I'm sure will come out more in the, the actual in the actual flavour when we taste it. But yeah, the malty backbone of this one and the yeasty side of things is really quite nice. But um, yeah, it goes together well. I have to say, I do like this one. Um, on the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect as well. You've got a little bit of smooth earthiness in there. <clears throat> There's a little bit of smooth earthiness. You've also got a little touch of... Um, you do have a little touch of a kind of herbal character in there as well. I'd be curious to know what hops they've used in this one, incidentally. But yeah, you've got a little bit of that going on. And then you've also got... You've got a little touch of a... I would say... You've got you've got a nice little bit of floral character in there, but I'd say that takes a bit of a back step to the, the grassy side of things. You've got a nice kind of fresh, grass smooth, grassy element to this beer. So yeah, the way that that goes together... For me, it's really nice actually. Um, so yeah, the yeah the green component for me, a little bit earthy, a little bit herbal, tiny bit floral, but then mainly kind of grassy. I'd say it's more kind of herbal and grassy. The 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 hoppy character in this one and just from the aroma I would actually wonder if it is local Belgian hops they're using in this one because it has some of the herbal character of the English but it's also got some of the kind of brightness that you expect from the German noble hops and I've always found that Belgian hops sit kind of somewhere in the middle actually which is interesting but yeah I think probably local Belgian hops in this one of what variety though I'm not sure it didn't say when I read about the beer earlier 
you know, the fruity side of things then. And um, this is kind of what you'd expect from the style as well. You've got a little bit of a kind of dried apricot note to it. There's a little touch of the kind of banana from the yeast, but not overly much. You've got some dried pear in there. You've got sultanas, maybe a little touch of a fresh green apple, you know, something like this. Uh, but aroma wise, this beer is pretty much bang on the money for what you would expect to the style, to be honest with you. You can't really ask for much more. Um, so yeah, as I always say, take a wee bit of time just to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But I think, um, I think it's about time that we had a taste of this one to see what it's all about. So uh, yeah, this one is the Schuf 40. Um, the 40th anniversary Blonde Ale from Brasserie de Schuf uh, in Belgium. Yeah, really looking forward to this. It's been a good while since we've had anything from this brewery, but the Scotch Ale was very nice, I have to say. But let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's pretty damn nice, actually. Yeah, I'm going to say straight away, for me, very, very clean and very light Belgian blonde beer, actually, which I do enjoy. Yeah, lovely, just nice, clean, light Belgian blonde. You can't ask for much more than that, of course. But, um, yeah, the way this one goes together, I think, is really, really quite nice. It's, as I say, it's been a while since I've had uh, a Belgian blonde, but this one certainly strikes me as being a little bit more kind of bready and yeasty, whereas the other Belgian blondes I've had in, in that, I rem that I remember in fairly recent times have been slightly sweeter. So this is a more kind of yeasty and almost a more yeasty, bready and sort of spicy um, Belgian blonde, actually. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. So, yeah, the way this beer goes about its business is quite nice. This is one of the ones where it's very clean and drinkable in the beginning, but then it develops a, <coughs> pardon me, a really quite nice and quite, um, you know, a fairly strong aftertaste, actually. This is good. So, thumbs up to Brasserie de Chouf for this one. Um... Yeah, so let's focus then. Let's break this beer down as we always do in the videos. So middle third of your palate then. You can feel the backbone of this beer. You've got a lovely little bit of kind of fresh white bready bread crust. That absolutely sits there. So yeah, fresh white bready bread crust. Toward the front of that middle third of your palate, you do get a little touch of woodiness coming out of the beer. So yeah, a little, little bit of woodiness in this one. On top of that, you can feel there's a little bit of an almost Jacob's cream cracker sort of note to the beer as well, which is good. So yeah, a little bit of fresh Jacob's cream cracker. Uh, and then above that, you start to get some different bready elements out of the beer. For me, there's almost a layer of like a wholemeal brown bread on top of that. And I think that Within that, I think that's where you're getting the kind of sage notes out of this beer. It's kind of, for me, it's really unusual to say that there's sage flavour in a beer, but I know for a fact that sage is in this, it apparently is in this beer, according to the Untapped. So yeah, you can taste this sort of sage, uh, herbally character within that brown bready layer in this one. So the beer's already really quirky from that perspective. But yeah, what else can we say with this one? On top of that kind of brown wholemeal bready layer, and I will say the brown bread gets a little bit sweeter the further forward on the palate you go. But um, yeah, you have a little bit of, um, you certainly have a little bit of that going on with this one. You get a little bit of sweetness there. Above that though, you start, you start to get the white bready layer, so you can feel that nice kind of fluffy, 
uh, white bready character coming out of the beer. And the, the white bread, it is fluffy and airy, but at the same time, it does feel as if it's got a good little bit of density to it. But above all of that, above all of that, you've got a sweet kind of... Um, how would you say? You do have a kind of sweet brown sugary note to this one. So in the dead centre of your palate, there's a little bit of a kind of honey. Uh, there is a little bit of a nice kind of oily honey note to it. Um, yeah, nice kind of oily honey note to it. And as you move further out from that, it's a little bit more kind of biscuity, like a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of note that you get. So um, yeah, again, the way that that goes together, I think is very, very nice. Um, but yeah, this beer, the further you go into the aftertaste with it, the more sort of woody and sort of spicy you get, the spicy character you get out of it. So this is this is quite nice. Toward, as I say, toward the back of that middle third of your palate, you get this kind of sagey notes out of it. You've also got a little bit of that kind of clovey character, which is inherent in a number of Belgian beers of blonde colour, if you like. Um, so yeah, this is interesting for sure, but let's focus on the back third of the palette then with this one. So the border region between, um, the border region between middle and back third of your palette, you get a nice little bit of bready build up there. So a nice little bit of bready build up in this one. Um, and I would say, yeah, you get some of the sage and some of the clove mixed in with that. It's like a white bread, actually. But the base of the back third of your palate, you've got a little bit more of a kind of, you do get a little bit of woodiness there as well, but you've got the bread crust that we mentioned earlier, you've got the cracker. Then you've got the kind of wholemeal brown bready layer, which is a bit tall and a bit more airy. So yeah, a little bit of a more airy, tall brown bready layer. Then you've got the white bread. You do have the kind of white bready layer above that, which is quite nice. Um, and these layers, of course, as you always get on the back third of the palette, these layers definitely feel that little bit taller and that little bit more airy. And above all of that, you get more of the kind of yeasty character coming out of the beer. You get a little bit of that more kind of farmhousey type vibe out of it. So, yeah. So, on yeah, on that back third of the palette, you can feel that really airy, white bready layer. And it has a little bit of a kind of honeycomb note to it. You do get a little bit of a... Oh, I always find that the yeasty character gives you a little bit of a honeycomb bread. There's a little bit of woodiness and crackeriness in there. But yeah, above that, it just feels like there's another layer of very light, airy bread. And you can feel that the top, the, 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 back, uh, the back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is definitely taller. Then as you come further forward, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together a little bit more once again. So... Yeah, the way that that beer goes together, the way that the beer goes together from that perspective is also very, very nice. So gets a big thumbs up from me. I think that covers the malty and yeasty side of this one, to be honest with you. Let's go on to the hoppy side of the beer. So the back corners of the palate then, there's a nice little bit of earthiness to the hops. And we kind of pick that up in the aroma with this beer. So yeah, nice little bit of earthiness in there. But as you move further forward, it's got a little bit of a kind of herbal character to it. <coughs> Pardon me. So yeah, you've got a nice little bit of a herbal character to this one. And then as you move further, so yeah, a little bit of herbal character, a little bit of, well, a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of herbal character. And then as you push further forward, the herbal notes do spread forward a little bit and you start to get some nice kind of floral aromaticity out of this one too. So yeah, there's a little bit of floral aromaticity in there. And then round the front curve of the palette, you've got a little bit of a, a lighter, grassy sort of thing going on with this beer, which again, I, I very much enjoy. Um, so yeah, nice little bit of lighter, grassy character to the beer. And yeah, it's the, the, the green component in this one, it's really not a very bitter beer. This one, the green component is actually very smooth. And I, I really think just from the profile, the flavour that we're getting on this one, I think it is Belgian hops. That have been um, have been used in this beer because you've got the earthiness, you've got the herbal character, and you've also got the kind of fairly bright grassiness. I think it's a, a local Belgian hop that's been used in this one. So yeah, um, I think that's the green component covered as well. So let's look at the front third of your palate and the fruity side of things. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up with this one. And a little bit of white bready 
uh, character in there. The base of that front third of your palette, again, you've got a little bit of bread crust and a little bit of cracker. Then above that, you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer. Um, so, yeah, I like how that... I do like how that goes together as well. It's got a nice dry fruity character to this one. So let's just have a wee look at these fruits and see what we're actually getting from this. So yeah, at the back of that front third of your palette, you can feel the base is kind of like, it's got a little bit of that dried apricot-y sort of thing. There's a little bit of sultana. So you dried apricot, a little bit of sultana. Um, and I think, yeah, that lingers into the aftertaste. But as you move further forward on the palette there, you start to get an oily pear. Yeah, there's a little bit of an oily pear, maybe a little bit just behind the front tip of the tongue. You've got a more kind of fresh green apple type note to this beer as well. So, yeah, the way that this beer goes together from that perspective, I think, is very nice. So it gets a big thumbs up from me. Um... Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit of apricot, yeah, as I say, a little bit of apricot, a little bit of, uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of apricot, a little bit of um, kind of sultana, you know, dried white green grapes, some oily pear, a little bit of fresh green apple, I don't know, there's maybe a little tiny touch of like dry banana in there as well, but overall the fruity side of this beer is kind of what you would expect from a Belgian blonde, but like I've said a few times, in this video this is definitely not one of the kind of sweeter belgian blondes you're going to come across this one is a little bit more kind of herbal and uh, yeasty if you like but it's an interesting beer this one and i'm glad that i got to uh to try this but i think we've said everything we need to about the flavor let's round off the review with a wee look at the mouthfeel so um yeah the the mouthfeel of this beer then, it's kind of, I'd say it's definitely light bodied this beer. The carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it, which you kind of expect from Belgian beers because of the use of the brew sugar. So it's quite clean and quite crisp and quite light. In terms of IBUs, I think this one is probably about 20-ish IBUs. The malt base is, a, yeah, I'd say the malt base in this one is quite, it's got a bit of dryness to it, but it's also got a bit of smoothness, tiny little touch of sweetness. But not a lot. It's actually more of a kind of herbal leaning beer, this one. But yeah, lovely kind of hoppy characteristics to it as well. As I say, about 20-ish IBUs at most, maybe 15. And then you've got a little bit of dry fruity character to it. But overall, I really like how this one, and uh, I really do like how this one goes together. So it gets a big thumbs up from me in that sense. Um, Yeah, uh, I think this has been a really interesting beer to try. So I think we can leave it there. So this one was the... um. The Schuf 40, a 5.6% Belgian style blonde ale from Brasserie de Schuf in Belgium. So, yeah, it's been really cool to return to these guys after what's been a long time. We do need to get some more Belgian beers reviewed for you here on the channel as well. But again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, Brasserie de Schuf as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point very, very soon. But until the next time, Slanjit, Skull, cheers. See you guys very, very soon.